So great to have you here today. I really appreciate you coming. This is something that I um, was really inspired by your story. I haven't done this in a long time, kind of interviewed someone. So I wanted to share um, with everyone, you know, you to everyone. Um, Celeste Yumnek uh, is here joining us. And before we kind of really get into who Celeste is and what she does, I just want to, I'm going to share my screen here and just show you just a little bit of the work that she's done on this film that won an, um, an Annie Award. And then we're going to share the film. So let me just share this real quick here, share my screen. And um, through here, what I'm going to show you right now is the seven minute movie. So make sure that you watch this. When I saw this, Celeste had uh, reached out to me uh, a long time ago and and I had seen this film and I was just blown away and then heard she was going to be at the Annie Awards and then they won the Annie Awards and it was just truly amazing and remarkable and I was blown away by just the visual, the representation of it, the story, the characters just really excited me and that's why i'm really excited today just to um talk with celeste and have celeste just share some stories with us and why uh, and and a major thing that just happened in her life that i want all of you guys to realize that things are possible you know if, if you allow them to be that the dreams can come true um so without further ado i'm going to show you the film right now let's watch that and come back into um, a discussion Hey, will you stop adding to the mess? Oh, you are so cute. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that. Oh, what is this? Stop, stop it, stop it. I'm tired of this too. Huh? I wasn't talking to you. Oh, you want some tea? Okay, tea coming right up. Sugar? And, and what's going on? Oh, she wants some tea. You want some tea? Oh my God, I don't want tea. <laughs> Stop smoking, Sorna. <laughs> oh, oh, shut up. It's not from the smoke. What's that? <laughs> give me that. Never. Hey, is that just all of us? I say give it to me. Never, never. Give it to me. Never, never. Give it to you, bitch. Give it to you. Never. <laughs> Will you stop? Hey, what's wrong with you? Where are you going? Stop! Stop! Stop there! Uh. Hey. Dear Solaris sisters, you are invited to sing at the annual Autumn Festival. Yes! Finally! Time for rehearsal, ladies! Let's go! La 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 Attention, attention. The new laws for today are as follows. Singing is forbidden for women. Except in groups of three or more. We are okay. Bicycles are forbidden. Picnics, forbidden. Dancing, forbidden. And owning a dog is forbidden. Oh, God. Over my dead body. Nobody touches my dog. Nobody. Nobody touches my dog. Oh, 
over my dead body. Nobody touches my dog. Nobody. Calm down. Not. I have a severe allergy. <laughs> Why does everybody have to die? What do we do now? All right, Celeste, that was just, again, it's just truly amazing. And could you just share um, with me just a little, and us just a little bit, just about your story, just where you're from, where you went to school, how you got started and how this film uh, came about? 
Absolutely. Thank you so much for the introduction, Stephen. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, we've been talking for ages. Um, I basically started studying fine arts way back in 2011 and then went into animation because I've always wanted to do animation, did a diploma in South Africa, which is where I'm from. And then I was very lucky to receive a scholarship to go to uh, Netflix, to go to Netflix, sorry. I was very lucky to receive a scholarship from Netflix to go study at Goblin in Paris. And, uh, and that's where I was able to put together this film with four other incredible filmmakers from all over the world. Uh, it was myself, Zaki from Ghana, Ethiopia from, Feben from Ethiopia, Mernaz from Iran, uh, and um, I mentioned Eve from China. So uh, this is our group. And we did this film at Koblan. We spent nine months on it. We poured our heart and soul into it. I was very lucky to be able to be there. And then we basically released it into the ether. It spent about two years on the festival track, won a bunch of different awards and everything. And then in February last year, it, um, yeah, I, I got told it was nominated for an Annie Award, which blew my entire mind. And I didn't know that that was possible. At the time, I, I actually had gotten a job teaching at SCAD in Atlanta. Um, and it was, yeah, it was a great job and I was enjoying it. But I think the moment that I got told at the Annie Award, I, we were up for the Annie Award, I kind of, felt that, okay, things are going to change now and doors might open up. So, and I could maybe go into do, doing the dream job that I want to do one day, which is basically work in Hollywood for animation. And, um, and yeah, and then it won the award, which was crazy. And it was insane. It was so lovely seeing you there. And we just went, the whole team, luckily, all everyone from Paris was able to go through um, to LA to the awards. And then, yeah, it was the one to win. So I'm endlessly grateful. This film is a passion project. Uh, to the nth degree it's about it's something so, so dear to all of our hearts uh, the guys that did the soloists and um, it's from Merit Naz's basically her story that she told it's based on her life and her experiences um, even though it is a bit of a fantasy but yeah the story is precious and it's sad and it's beautiful and I'm very proud of it and I'm very glad that it won won the Annie Award and since then um, you know, I decided after the Annie Awards to apply for the O1 visa which I've recently received um, and I'm very, very happy for that. I applied for it, not knowing if I would get it, but hoping. Um, because the thing is that I found with industry in LA and Hollywood and me being from South Africa, it's really difficult to get into the USA. It's really difficult to get in here. It's not easy. And um, I just decided to go for it myself because studios are always asking, do you have, you know, are you allowed to work in the US? And I always have to say, no, I'm not. I would need sponsorship. And I felt that that was a very big hurdle in order to work in industry and what I want to do. So I decided to go for the O1 visa. And, you know, it's something that I had wanted to do. I've been wanting to work in industry since I would say 2015, 2016. And it's been a long journey of building my career up and building my opportunities up and because of this film and then a couple of other projects that I worked on um just to mention them there's three of them basically one is the Star Wars Visions anthology season two that I worked on a project in there and then Pizazi Moto Generation Fire which is an anthology from South Africa it's on Disney plus and Kia and the Kimoja Heroes which I also managed to work on they were all through a studio in South Africa um they're all on Disney plus and uh, basically, because of all these wonderful things I was able to work on, that gave me the footing for the O1 visa. Um, okay, okay, got it. So you had you were having the opportunities um, just to work for the are there many studios in South Africa? To, to so, no, not really. It's it's uh, Triggerfish, Sunrise, and a few others to name to name a few. Um, Triggerfish is the one that really works on international projects. So Disney, uh, Lucasfilm tends to work with them. So the project that I worked on was through Triggerfish Studios, and that was in, um, you know, they they connected directly with Disney. Okay, okay. And so you were just working through, um, doing through those studios. And how, how did you like, uh, did you have your portfolio? Or do you feel like you were professionally ready just from the, the schooling that you had when you submitted? Were you blindly submitting to these studios early on or did just all this happen after you went to school and did the film? So it's actually interesting. My connection with the studio Triggerfish started before I even went to Goblin, before I went to school there because I finished my diploma. I got an internship at Triggerfish in Cape Town where I worked on the Kia and the Kimoja Heroes project. And then because of that, because of them knowing me, knowing my work ethic, knowing what I'm able to do, I went to Goblin and then we kept in contact and I kept working for them 
freelance remotely. Um, and I was working on these projects even while I was studying at Goblin. So these all sort of came together at the same time where last year in 2023, everything I'd been working on since 2018, plus the film all sort of accumulated, came together and then I could use them all towards my visa. Got it. And how, how long was that whole process? Would you see, because I, you know, there's a lot, I'm, I'm curious because I know there's a lot of artists out there that are overseas and they look at the American studios and they, you know, just, they, they want to get into them and they want to work for the American companies. And that, that is something that stops people from getting those jobs. Unfortunately, a lot of times in the studios, they want to know, do you have work authorization? That's a common question. And to have this visa, I do know that um, a lot of times you, it's again, the more you can prove that you've won awards or you've done things was that all part of this process did you have yes. to show them lots of this sort of um work in order for this to even happen yes exactly so the one thing with the owen visa and i'm not sure how much of this you want to put in or or say but basically you, having a lawyer is what really helps um and i think that submitting for the own visa on your own is not a good idea um so unfortunately you do need to have a little bit of money to help get you a lawyer and and get you through to that part but yes it's it's an element of okay your awards that you've won so for my short film the fact that i've won so many awards that's great the other projects that i've worked on being of higher caliber so it's great that i've never directly worked for disney or for lucasfilm but these projects are under the disney lucasfilm blanket so it helped me a lot. And I do know because they outsourced to a lot of studios overseas, that's possible for quite a few people. It's not, you know, it's that they could work for studios that worked on projects for Disney or for um, Lucasfilm. Uh, so that really helps a lot. These are big names. Um, and then also recommendations from people that are known in industry, you know, uh, so recommendation letters from people that have achieved a lot as well. Very helpful. The fact that I went to SCAD, a lot of my co-professors were great at giving me wonderful um, recommendation letters. And then news articles as well. I've been interviewed a couple of times, um, the, and not just news articles about me, but news articles about my projects. So even news articles about Kia and the Komoja heroes, or about Kazazi modes or uh, Star Wars visions, all of those are sort of compiled into this huge document just to be like, okay, here's everything that I've done, um, and there's my package. And, and then also on top of that, the final other thing that you need, I think this was sort of the the thing that really gets you over the edge or not the it's a thing that you really need and it's most difficult to get i think is the is a deal memo or a uh an agreement with someone from the usa or they don't even have to be in the usa but that gives a reason why you should be in the, the usa and why you should be working there and that they are going to be working with you for a period and then you also need to provide a schedule of what you plan to do for that time period so That's who's that coming from like who does that let who do, who do you need that sort of letter from yeah. so that is where networking <laughs> comes into play and you basically want to network with people that are not necessarily in the big studios or in industry but just people who want to collaborate on projects and so i found someone or someone actually found me via a friend via south africa um, a South African studio who are developing a film. This lady is a producer and she reached out to me to help her on projects. So when she reached out to me, I was in South Africa at the time. Um, and I said, well, I'd love to help you, but I also want to go work in LA and, and Los Angeles uh, and the USA. Can you help me then to figure out that problem? And then we sort of came together on that. She's paying me to do work and I I'm then able to come to the side um, and she wants me here anyway because we want to collaborate on projects so but she's not you know necessarily big in animation she's more of a producer and a writer and I'm more of an artist working on projects and it's more of a freelance basis um, so it works out really well we have a three-year schedule and a three-year plan but she is someone that someone recommended me and and that they recommended me to her as well. So okay. yeah. relationship. network and networking, just meeting people, contacting, reaching yeah. out, you know, little fingers crossed, you know, that hopefully that person will get back to you. You know, you don't get yeah. ghosted, right? Yeah. Um, and I mean, the, the way that I met her, the guy that I met that introduced me to her, I met him through a program that I was doing where I was trying to develop my own pitch project through a South African uh, group. And then I went to go pitch it. I met him there. Then I saw him again in Annecy and the Annecy Film Festival. And then, he, you know, it was this very slow, long process to eventually get to this lady who, who helped me too. 
So, now, so like speaking of the festivals, and how, how often would you go to festivals or do you go to conventions? How, how important is that to you for to, for to move you forward that you found? I think so far it's been really, really important. Um, I have made my biggest contacts in the festivals. I did I did Annecy just after I graduated from Goblan, but then it was still sort of hybrid because of the pandemic. Um, so that wasn't as effective, but I went this past year in 2023, and that was fantastic and setting up a whole slew of connections. Um, and then Lightbox as well, which I went to, I saw you again. Like, I, I don't think that it's everything, you know, the, the networking is a slow process. I've been very patient. Um, I have met people that I still talk to now. 2018 was the first time I went to the USA and I went to CTN back then. Um, I actually talked to you for the first, I don't know if you remember, but you and I had like a portfolio review in 2018. Okay, um, I don't remember the very, very first time. I, and I was like, okay, that's how I got to sort of start knowing you. Um, and I mean, yeah, it's just, it's now four or five years, 2024 already. So it's like almost six years later and um, these things take time. So I just slowly been moving forward. But one thing that I found is that even though the networking is slow, while that is slow, my career also is just going. So by the time I'm reconnecting a couple of years later, like now with you, I'm a lot further along than I was last time I spoke to you. So it also. Oh, great, great, good. And because you, you know, cause now, yeah, it does. It's like everything takes so time. One of my favorite things to always just say to people is in regards to like the avocado tree, from the time you plant the seed to the time that it bears its fruit is about seven years. And that's from just giving it, just nurturing it, putting it in the right environment. You know, it's got to have the sunlight. It's got to have lots of water and just eventually it'll bear its fruit. And I think that's so something that, you know, you just kind of hit on that great point is, you know, it, it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. You can't just go to one show and expect something to happen. You know, sometimes it can, right? Not to say that it can't, but it's the same thing with advertising. You can't just do one form of one advertising, advertise on one day and hope that everyone's gonna come. It takes multiple times um, just to advertise. And um, there was P.T. Barnum, uh, who, you know, the circus, who, who did the circus and there was, uh, um, all, all that he wrote a book he was a great marketer and he put out a book on just marketing and talked about it takes about seven times for just advertising before people actually start to pay attention and see oh i, I didn't even notice that you know the first few times it, it doesn't manifest and i could you you know it's it's interesting you you know because I, I don't recall you're reminding me now just from 2018 when i first yeah. met you but it's amazing that at that moment, meeting so many people, I met you that one time, but I've met you so many times now, and now becomes that familiarity with you. And now here I am saying, God, I love your story. I want to interview you, you know, and then this, <laughs> yeah. you know, manifests into that. And I think that's something that it's such that belief system. It's just all these little moments. And, and that's what I love about just your journey. And can you tell me just a little bit about your scholarship and with Netflix and how, like getting that, because that might be like interesting. People are going, what is that? How do I get a scholarship? Yeah, it's, you know, I think that every country will have its own um, systems or people that are interested in helping. The Netflix scholarship, I was very lucky in that it was for African students specifically. Netflix has an outreach program. It's still going. So if there are any African students who want to go to Goblan and want to study there, the Netflix scholarship is still available. They have a different range every year, I think. But in my year, they were open to giving 10 scholarships. Um, and this is, you know, it's a fantastic um, program. And it's not, I don't know what the standards are now because my year was the first year to get the scholarships. So for us, it was kind of all the African students were very lucky in, in being able, because we were only six, I think, African students okay. at the time. Um, so it's not necessarily that it's the same now, but um, yeah, it was an agreement. And it's one of those moments where I got lucky, you know, where it's it's not a lot that I've gotten lucky. It's not, um, a lot of it has been, you know, really, really hard work and really figuring it out myself. But in that moment, I think that was very, very amazing and lucky that I, I got that opportunity. Um, and I know that Goblan as a school, if anyone still is interested in studying there and is not from Africa, um, Cecile Blondell runs the program and she's wonderful. And I, she said to me, well, she doesn't run the program, she runs the internet, she's the international liaison. So she makes sure, you know, who is attending and she's looking at opportunities for all these wonderful students. And she always said that her dream was, you know, if she could make Goblan free to, to study at, that would be amazing. So she's always working on getting people in, 
getting people to be able to study there um and it's worth it's worth checking in, it's worth going it's worth trying um and not just that goblan goblan is a great school but there are so many different opportunities but you have to have your ear to the ground um and try and win in different things and it'll you'll get lucky <laughs> and what is it that you had to show them um like in order to get that to make that a reality yeah so it was basically all of my artwork that I'd done so far, especially a little bit of 3D as well as 2D was helpful for Gablan and for the scholarship. Um, and then also mostly an introductory to myself. So a one minute video of who I am, of a bit of my history. Um, and what's great is again, it's networking. I had met Cecile um, a year before at the summer school that I attended at Gablan that I went to. And then again, when she came down to South Africa for a, um, the Cape Town Animation Festival. So I'd met her there again. So I was, you know, known as well at that time. And I think that again, benefited me. Uh, so when I sent in my application, she was like, oh yes, I know Celeste. Okay, let's look at her stuff, you know, so. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Again, that, that those little things, those little meetings and that's almost, and be nice to everyone on the way up, right? It's just like, you never know who you're gonna meet, where, where they are at what moment in time that all of a sudden, it just there's that connection and I, I honestly believe it's just like meant to be you know it's just like I just believe in that so strongly and it's just that the energy of it all kind of connects us in this great way now since you've been here how have things been are, are you currently working did you land a gig at a, at a studio like can you tell me a little bit about what you're up to I don't have a gig at a studio yet I do think that and from what I've heard with people is that it's you know we're still on that downturn from the strikes and it's still a difficult time um i have been i have gotten some freelance work which is great um some of it not even from the usa some of it from south africa a little bit from um the usa but i can't talk about it uh <laughs> until you know okay, the same sure. time. Yeah. yeah but um freelance is going and that's the great thing is that i'm allowed to be here and i'm allowed to work freelance yeah so, yeah and what would you say so what what is your dream job I, like we, i was just showing everyone was able to see your work just now it's just so good i mean you are so talented in so many ways you're not just limited in that one area and it's you know it's just i'm always just blown away by that just the the amount when when i just see someone who can kind of like do it all and you're doing it all tapping into the 3D, you're doing the art direction, you're doing the directing, you're doing, you know, all of that, just um, how, you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I think for me, I, I really want to get some time spent at a big studio. That for me is really exciting, especially in character design. That's my favorite thing. Um, visual development as well. I'd love to eventually work up to direction and art direction, um, but I would just, I just need to get started, you know, as someone coming from outside of the USA, it's like the biggest dream to just be able to come here and work at the big studios. I know there's probably a lot of people in LA who are like, oh, you know, sure. we're, we're so over that, you know, but I know a lot of people from outside of these big eyes and we just want to come in and work at these um, big studios. And then um, at the same time, uh, I am also going to take on some storyboard courses because I, I think that story is also the next step for me and character design and my visual development I've done a lot of that and I want to see if I can move a little bit into story and also because there's a lot of opportunity in story um work so that's yeah. where I'm headed to as well yeah, that's true it definitely will open up those doors in those different areas for you I mean just even would you even just take um how far up to that story level job do you would you want to start would you take a storyboard revisionist role if someone was out there saying hey I need a storyboard revisionist you know yeah I I I, I've learned you just need to get started somewhere, you know, and I need to get started somewhere. And there's a lot of things I still don't know and I still want to learn. So I would be super happy with anything that just gets me going. And I, and I know, you know, you want to come to a point in your career where you have the choice to say, oh, I'd rather I can pick a character design job at the top studio. I don't have to worry. But, you know, I'm still, it's been maybe 10 years, but I'm still not there. I still need to, you know, keep working my way into industry. And, any opportunity is a great opportunity. So um, I, yeah, I'd be super happy with that. And because I still want to keep learning. For me, I love animation and I just, I just want to know as much as possible. So if I can keep learning in whatever position I have, that's, that'll be a great benefit. So um, now, now just tell me just a little bit again, just, just cause you've, you're just your wide range of work that you do do, you know, you're versatile, you're handling so many things, just your own training for your own personal self. What are you doing to constantly just improve your work? I mean, you know, there's so much that goes into just 
getting to where you are just from being an observant person, uh, observing life, you know, being able to draw, have the, those fundamentals down, you know, your construction super solid, your ideas are super solid, your your gestures, the, the feeling and everything you're putting into your artwork. Um, do, what, what do you kind of attribute that to, you know, for yourself? Because I know everyone's trying to get there. That's the goal. Yeah, um, I mean, it's been a very long time of me drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. Um, I think I'm at the point now where one thing I've realized a lot, which is very strange, is relaxing <laughs> and not drawing for a while yeah. um, and taking in a lot of the things around me, also observing a lot about the other artists and getting to a point now where I've sort of stopped drawing because I have to in my own time for my own work. So not sitting there being like, oh, I have to get 10 things out of my portfolio. I have to do this, I have to do that. I find a lot of frustration in in that work but instead if there's some inspiration or there's some spark I'll say okay I really want to draw that that makes me excited and then I'll try something and I'll push it and I'll try something new um and I'll push into maybe okay I don't render that often I'm more of a sketching artist I want to try a little bit of rendering and I'm excited for that it's like a hobby really almost and then it's like okay I can feel myself improving in this way and that way um I'm currently doing freelance for a couple of different things so one is a little bit of rendering one is a little bit of sketching one is more animal centric or human centric and then I, I get to push again in the direction that I'm also not used to so having a lot of little things going on at the same time um is also pushing me further than than I'm um I'm used to so yeah it's a mix of those things but I think I've come to a point where instead of stressing too much about getting everything done I've done a lot of that already so now I'm just trying to let it flow more naturally and trying to just enjoy it for this for this pursuit of knowledge for the pursuit of, yes. of growth it's it's for that joy of that instead of saying oh i have to it's because i want to i love right yes absolutely it's because you want to again it's not oh i have to draw more no you want to draw more because you want to get to that uh place do you do you find yourself drawing in a sketchbook um do you, do you like doing more of that traditional or do you do more digital uh media um, so I'm more digital. I I just love Photoshop and I love Procreate both for different reasons. Um, and it'll keep me, it keeps me on my toes to have my iPad with me and be drawing in one area or to be sitting on my computer and drawing on my, on my tablets. And those two things keep me sort of fresh in my drawings because they have different, slightly different techniques and ways of doing them. I wish I kept more of a sketchbook and at SCAD when I was teaching, I tell all the students all the time to have a sketchbook and I used to a lot more. Uh, I am getting now to a point where because I'm taking storyboard courses, I'll probably end up um, going back into sketchbook times because what's lovely about storyboarding is that you don't get to be precious. So you have to just, you know, right. make yeah. doodles and doodles. So I want to go back to that. But for the most part, um, I enjoy a lot of the digital, the digital work and that's where my strength is. All right, that's really great. Well, you know, I, I wanted, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I just really just wanted to showcase you. I wanted to share your work with, with everyone. And I know that, you know, you're, you're out here and you're enthusiastic and you're ready to get going. How can people get in touch with you and, and look at your artwork and um, anyone who's seeing this that, you know, want to just take her, put on every project, <laughs> you know, um, how, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, so my name's Celeste Yamnek, it's J-A-M-N-E-C-K for my last name, it's Celeste Yamnek at gmail.com if you want to email me, um, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram as Art of Callisto, um, anyway, you know, if you want to send me an email, if you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn or Instagram, I'm there, I'd love to chat, I'd love to share my stuff, um, and then as a sort of a final thing, I just want to say about it, you know, I'm so glad that I got here to this point. It's been a long process. I I just wanted to put a disclaimer that this is my experiences and I have no idea how it would be for someone else. And I do know that having a lawyer saved my life and that mm. I just, none of this is advice officially because I can't, you know, yeah. uh, there's a lot of um, specifics depending on your thing. And, you know, the, the US, I think it's so scary, the US immigration system and the US government and all that, you really have to tiptoe around it. They need to not be thinking that, or, or you shouldn't be doing anything to violate any sort of agreement with the USA. Do your research, ask questions, and then get official uh, representation if you can. Yeah. That might be your only choice, but it is scary. Don't do anything stupid. Don't work. Don't if you're not allowed to work, you don't work. You know, if you're not allowed to do anything, you don't do it. You respect it. 
I think that's why it's been good for me and that every time I've been in the USA, um, I've respected all of the boundaries. You know, there's only a certain amount of time in a visitor's visa that you're allowed to be in the USA. There's only so much. You, I, when I was working at SCAD, I was on a J-1 visa, which only allowed me to work for SCAD. I did no other work outside okay. of SCAD. So, you know, then you, you're limited and you have to be very aware of your limitations so that you don't get in any sort of trouble. Make sure you're respecting it. Um, make sure you're paying your taxes and doing all the stuff that's important. Um, and just, you kind of have to beg your way in or ask your way in very nicely and being a wonderful citizen and, you know, always yeah. paying your dues and all of that. So um, it's just very important where even if I'm giving advice, it doesn't, there's so much you need to be aware of but again if anyone wants to reach out and ask questions i'm happy to answer um i gave the sort of very simplest i think over simplest overview of everything but um it, it is complicated unfortunately yeah. um i will say also on top of everything else i've done a lot of research into visas to a bunch of different countries from all over the world mm -hmm. obviously none of them are easy i think that with the usa to me it seemed like one of the most impossible visas or the most impossible countries to get into if i was to list it amongst other ones to a point and then i got to a point in my career where then it opened up you know so if you can prove that you are a great artist that you are a great asset for the us to have yeah. um if your work st says a lot and stands for a lot and people can vouch for you in that way then doors will open up yeah, that's great. Um, you know, the bottom line is, it's like, just because something is difficult doesn't make it impossible. And just there's going to be a lot of work, no matter whether one's trying to get into the country or just one's trying to get into the studios and being artists. And I think it's this, this perseverance and this drive that clearly you have, again, things happen that way again again it can be hard you don't know how when where why but again just putting yourself out there and just knowing that it's possible and that's why i love uh these stories and your story it's funny the last person that i interviewed was a friend of mine and she's from iran and she got a visa and i interviewed she was last and this was a long time this was maybe four years ago now was and it's funny that maybe because i'm english you know and came from england and went through the whole visa process myself but i was a young child yeah, i was 10 years old um and my dad took care of it all it took about seven years for us to get our citizenship and do all that and um it, it was a journey but uh there was still almost, the same thing that you were saying just my dad would always just say, don't do anything stupid, you know, it's just if you dare do anything crazy, you get us kicked out of this country. And it was always scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Oh, my God, you know, you want to be on your best behavior and do the right thing. But I think just in general, it's just like, I love your attitude. I love your artwork. I love I love everything about you. I love your getting your perseverance and and what you're doing. And I hope that this rubs off on other artists out there that are going to see this and see that, you know what? I'm going through some stuff, but I can do this too. I live in another country, but I can do this too. And, and that's the hope just to uh, uh, make it happen. You know, that's what it all comes down to. Yeah. Thank you. I, I attended a, a talk by Aaron Blaze a couple of years ago as well, where he, his main topic was persistence of vision. And I think that got to me uh, very powerfully where it was just, you, you have to just be persistent. It's not, if it doesn't happen now, it'll happen eventually. If, yeah. You know, you're going to have ups and downs, moments where it seems like it's a great opportunity, moments where like no jobs are available and yeah. you just have to keep on persisting. And I think for me, working on projects that wasn't, you know, OK, sure, it's not Disney, sure, it's not this, it's not that, but it's still a project that's building me and building my foundation blocks and still, you know, so, yeah, just keeping persistent, I think, is key. And time does pass and then eventually you'll, you'll get where you want to go. Exactly, exactly. And then... It's in inevitable at some point, you know, it's just... Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's it's uh, the long and windy road, as Paul McCartney, you know, would say. Um, but Celeste, thank you so much for taking the time just to mm -hmm. uh, have this discussion. And um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. I know I will. I'll run into you soon now that you're in L.A. We can go grab coffee and stuff now. Absolutely. Um, but again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I'll thank add you. all the links and stuff uh, below. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stephen. I really, really appreciate it. It's been so lovely. All right. Thanks a lot, Celeste.